It's Jiren. Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about Hasami Porcelain. Hasami is a town inside the Nagasaki Prefecture in Japan. And for the past 400 years, they've been handcrafting a type of ceramic, a type of porcelain, and it's known as Hasami porcelain. It became really significant back in the 1500s because they started to improve their production so much so that they were able to keep the costs down, and eventually all over Japan, people began using Hasami porcelain. And at the time, that was very significant because before, anyone that could afford porcelain was very wealthy. So it brought porcelain to a whole new uh, wealth class, essentially. And out of impressive consistency that Japan happens to be known for, they've been working on that porcelain ever since and improving those designs and improving their processes. It's really, really cool to see. Now, there are a wide variety of different manufacturers inside Hasami. They make a bunch of different types of porcelain and a bunch of different types of ceramics. Today, we're gonna to be focusing on one specifically. It's a teapot and a couple of mugs that I've recently purchased, and I'm going to review it. One of the things I find very interesting about Hasami Porcelain is its commitment to accuracy. Whether it's this company or another, it's always very important to maintain a level of consistency even though this is all handcrafted. So every single one of these has very specific measurements and every single angle is shaped the same exact way. It's honestly pretty striking to see what it looks like just because of how straightforward the design is. When it comes to design, there's often a conversation of simplicity is not necessarily easy. People tend to have a mentality that the most simple things are the easiest, when in reality, it takes a lot of effort to understand what you can remove in order to focus on the essentials. Now, obviously a tea set and a mug, these designs have been very consistent for a long time, but the way that they take this design and then iterate on it is very impressive. One of the things I really like about Hasami porcelain is that it is handcrafted. And there's a level of detail that you really appreciate when you know that a person took their time to make sure everything was so accurate. Every single one of these mugs all slots together perfectly, including the plates that they come with and the teapot as well. As a matter of fact, I can take the lid from the teapot and fit it perfectly on top of the mug. One of the things that you'll notice with Asami porcelain is that there's a fine grit to the pieces. They're a little rough almost, and in a way they feel like sandpaper. Uh, when you have a glaze on top, this is a matte glaze, uh, it's a little bit smoother, so this natural one without any glaze is a little bit more rough to the touch. The black matte glaze is a little bit smoother. And then of course, if you have a shiny gloss glaze, you're really gonna lose a lot of that roughness. I think there's something to the roughness of the piece that I really like. Uh, most of the things I've drank from in the past have been very smooth. And so the little bit of grit adds, I don't know, a little bit of texture and almost curiosity to a drinking experience. I know that sounds a little pretentious, but we are reviewing ceramics here, so I'm trying to give an honest experience as best possible. In truth, when you start to review something like ceramics, something that has been mass manufactured for a long time, it's important to dig into the details of the differences that are there, because really it's not very significant. If we're gonna be honest, a $9 mug and a $30 mug are going to be very similar. They're going to function the same way and you're going to have a very similar experience when you're using it. Each piece has a very good weight. I enjoy holding it. I feel like it's not too light. I don't think I'm going to just toss it out of my hand accidentally. Um, and it's never too heavy that I feel like I can't hold it for a while. Of this mug, there's a nine ounce version, a 13 ounce version, and a 16 ounce version. So it kind of depends on what sort of size drink you'd like to have. I thought the 13 ounce was a nice compromise because I can fit a 12 ounce drink in with a little bit of space left over. And I also can re-pour my drink a few times, which gives me a little bit of, I don't know, work in the experience. In a lot of ways, the reason you'd spend money on something like this is because you appreciate the craft. You want to pay someone for their time spent making something that you really respect. And there is a placebo effect. When you use this, you feel better because you know that there was work that went into it. If I make coffee in the morning, I feel good because I put work into making that coffee and someone put work into making the porcelain that I'm drinking from. 
and it's just a little bit more of a personal experience. It's the same reason a person wants a selfie with someone or an autograph on a photo. They like that personalized experience way more than they like something that just came out of a printer. Now with all the great things about Hisami porcelain, the way it feels, how each piece interlocks and fits together, there are also some things that I don't 100% love from it. I would have liked to see in a little bit more space for my fingers in the 13 inch mug. My three fingers can just barely fit in, but they don't rest against the back, so I don't feel like I have a comfortable grip. Two fingers is fine though, so I can put my third right below and it holds fine. The only other really significant thing I noticed was that my teapot doesn't rest perfectly on the tray. It rocks back and forth ever so slightly. I think that's the fault of the tray, not necessarily the porcelain. This company also has a bunch of other different types of ceramics. They have some wine glass styled things and some plates, bowls. It's really interesting and I've enjoyed a lot of it so far just looking at it. I do hope to get a couple more pieces, although I can't say I see myself getting the entire set. As much as I do like these, they are a little fragile. It's important to take care of them. I can't just knock them around very easily in a sink, so I try to be mindful of how I'm using it and I hand wash them every single time. So far, these mugs and this teapot have been a blast to use. I know it's just a very subtle difference between another teapot and another mug, but I've enjoyed it. It's been worthwhile for me, and I hope you liked this video. If you did enjoy and you'd like to see more design-related reviews, I have more coming out soon. There's a level of detail that I really like in product design where you think about how the person is going to feel when they use it. That level of detail Detail is something I want to dig into, the user experience of any sort of product. These mugs are just the beginning of that journey here on this channel, and of course these mugs are going to be my daily drivers when it comes to drinking coffee and tea. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time.